Hey family, how y'all doing? Man, I miss y'all. Man, Bible study, being together to God be the glory. In this season, what we're going to do is we're going to be streaming Bible study. And guess who's going to be preaching? It's me, y'all, to God be the glory. Uh, I have set aside some time, some messages that I want to encourage you as we go through this season. Thank you for liking. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. Let your friends know as we go through this Bible study season, as we may be in a situation where we're out of our control, but to God be the glory, we're still under God's control. I'm going to give you weekly messages on Wednesday at 7 o'clock as we go through this season. I love you. God bless you. Let all your friends know Pastor Jomo will be on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. God bless you. It's all about love, your love. Hey. Oh, I know it's all about your, all about your love. It's all about your love. Good evening. Love Purse, we want to welcome you to our midweek Bible study. How many of you know that this is the day that the Lord has made? Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, I don't know what's, where you are right now. I don't know what you're going through, but I want to encourage you right now that God is still able to do that what he said he can do. So wherever you are, I dare you right now to lift your hands and let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your anointing. Father, we thank you for your power. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that never loses its power. So God, I speak to each and every person under the sound of my voice. 
That person that may be going through issues, turmoil right now. That person may feel like giving up. God, I speak life to them right now, God. Because God, I know that you are a way maker. You are a miracle worker. You are a promise keeper, God. So Father, I thank you for the promises that you've given because your promises are yes and amen. We stand on your word, we decree it, and we declare it in Jesus' name. If you believe it, I believe you to shout amen right where you are. Hallelujah, God. God is worthy to be praised. Can you do me a favor? Can you lift your hands right where you are? Don't worry about who's around you. And let's go before the Lord in worship. Come on, the Bible says, enter his gates with praise. And it of course with thanksgiving, his gates with praise. Come on, let's worship him right now. He's worthy to be praised. Yes, God. Yes, Jesus. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Come on, right where you are. Just worship him right now. Can you sing it with me? Right where you are. You keep light. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You keep home. You store every heart that is broken. Because great are you, Lord. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Come on, sing it with us, come on. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath. Bless your name, Jesus. Come on, just bless him right now. We lift your name, girl. Yeah. Sing all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will say, Great are you. shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will say great are you Lord. come on sing it with me sing all the earth all the earth will shout your sing praise our hearts our hearts will yeah. cry these hey. bones will sing say great are you Your praise, we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your praise. 
the earth will shout your praise. Come on. Our hearts will cry. These bones will say, say great are you, Lord. Come on, you declare it. Say.
Good evening, family. Pastor Jay here. Welcome to Bible study in my study. I pray you've had a wonderful Wednesday. To God be the glory. All right, let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this, the day that you have made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Lord, your word states where two or three are gathered together in your name. There you are. So, Father God, I thank you right now that you're here. Father God, we pray for revelation, wisdom, insight, a word, your word. The most powerful thing on earth is the word. So, Father God, I thank you right now for the hearers of the word, that they may receive this word and it blesses their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, a couple things I want to mention before I jump in. First off, you need to get the outline. Number one, get the outline. Praise God. LFCC.tv forward slash Bible study lfcc.tv forward slash Bible study. Why? I am giving so many nuggets and so many keys. It's too hard to write down fast enough. So I'm telling you, go ahead, go to the website, get the download. So you already have it. Praise God. It's already written. It's there. And we have them cataloged. You can get them all. Praise God. At one time, it will bless your life. Also, I'm doing something a little special based on how much time I have. I'm going to make myself available to answer questions at the end of Bible study. Again, it's based on how much time I have. Well, I love you. God bless you. Well, let's jump in. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, let's make your faith confession. This is my Bible. I can be what it says I can be. I can do what it says I can do. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Come on. I believe that my life will never be the same after hearing and doing the living word of God in Jesus name. Well, as we've gone through this series on faith and the faith of Abraham and the test that he has gone through, uh, we will keep on going through this journey of understanding how faith must be built from season to season, test to test and trial to trial. We've said that by foundation, faith is not faith until it's tested. Faith is total obedience without total understanding. Faith is believing it so when it's not so, again, in order for it to be so. Faith is the currency of the kingdom. And all the promises of God are received by faith. All right, let's jump in today. Genesis chapter 15 is where we're going to. Genesis chapter 15. It reads, verse 1, after these things, the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Okay, let's break down every single word. It's Bible study. Let's get in. Praise God. So let's deal with these things. What are these things? Okay, we started with Genesis chapter 12. In verse 1, he says, leave your country, your kindred, and your family's house. What does that mean? When you go, God will show. So many of us are, want God to show, but we're not willing to go. Listen, believers, faith without works is dead. You got to show me something. When you step out, God will step in. Chapter 13, we dealt with Abraham separating from Lot. What do I call this? Check your bags. Praise God. Before you get on this flight, you got to check your bags. Not everything can go with you on this journey. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then last week, we dealt with Genesis chapter 14. This is where Abraham rescued his nephew Lot uh, from Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, so it taught us that Abraham uh, didn't let bitterness or harbor resentment uh, for his nephew doing what he did. Also, it taught us that Abraham understood honor. He made a promise to God that though I win this battle, and I get all this plunder, all this money, all this gold, all his riches. I won't touch it. Then he gave a tithe to Melchizedek. See, understand, uh, God will give you opportunities to see if he can trust you. Ah, praise the Lord. So as we delve into today, it says the word of the Lord came to him in a vision. Well, let's know. It lets us know that God speaks or communicates to us through visions and dreams. Now, God, that is not limited to visions and dreams. That's just one manner into which God communicates to us through visions and dreams. So that lets me know that I need to tune in. Uh, 
these thoughts, these visions. So what I do is when God gives me a vision or dream, I try to write it down to see, okay, Lord, what are you connecting it to? Uh, how, what does this, what does this mean for me in this season? Is this the future? Is it now? So we have to be mindful that when God drops something on us in our vision or dreams to, to really tap in to find out what does it mean? Hallelujah. By the way, the Bible says, if anyone lacks wisdom, ask God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Next, it says this saying, do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. Your reward for obedience shall be great. OK, now, why would Abraham be afraid? He had gained great influence in the land. Perhaps he thought he thought that those kings he just whooped might come back and get him. Praise God, because he just won a great battle and beat all these kings. So that's a real legit issue that they may come back and get him. Now, God gave him two good reasons for courage. Number one, he promised to protect him. Romans 8 31 says, if God be for you, who can be against you? And he promised to give him a great reward. When fear lies ahead of you, remember that God is with you through all difficult seasons. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Remember the word of God states this in Deuteronomy 31 6. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. All right. God gave me a little nugget for you. If you will only walk to what you can see, you will miss God. I say again, if you only walk to what you could see, you're going to miss God. Because God flows in the invisible. If you only walk to what you can see, you're going to miss God. We walk by faith and not by sight. Now, let me give you some keys to managing your fear. Keys to managing fear. Second Timothy 1 7 says this for God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love and a sound mind. So here's what I've understand this. Number one, understand fear is not a part of your package. Oh, glory. Fear is not a part of your package. What does that mean? If God didn't give me a spirit of fear, why would I uh, internalize and allow that thing to run me? God has not given me a spirit of fear. It's not a part of my package, but fear is an indicator that my faith tank is low. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Fear is an indicator your faith tank is low. It's like this, eh, 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 I need faith, eh, eh, I need faith. So what happens when fear creeps in, it's an indicator that my faith tank is low. He says this, understanding you don't have to protect yourself. He says, I am your shield. Psalms 84, 11 says this, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows grace, favor, and honor. No good thing shall he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Psalms 91 and 4 says this, he will give you, he will cover you and completely protect you. Yeah, yeah. Now, let's deal with the rewards that come through obedience. Hebrews eleven six says this, but without faith, it's impossible to walk with and please God. For whoever comes near to God must believe that he exists and believe that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God will bless you when you obey. Oh, glory. Back in my name, main text, Genesis chapter 15, verse two. That was all verse one, y'all. Yes, it was. V verse two says this. Abraham said, Lord God, what reward will you give me since I am leaving this world childless? And he who's the owner and the heir of my house, Elijah from Damascus, and Abraham continued, since you have not given me a child, no a servant will be my heir. What happens, technically what happens if, if the master, the ruler, or the owner did not have biological children, the servant, the most senior servant of the house would be the heir or, or get the inheritance of all. So, Eliza was Abraham's most trusted servant acting as a household administrator. According to custom, Abraham were to die without a son. The eldest servant would be the heir. Although Abraham loved Eliza, the servant, he wanted his own son to carry the family line. 
He had not seen God's promise fulfilled. So he thought this was the only possibility. Can God do more than this? Well, when you're dealing with an internal struggle of whether God can do it, this is what I do. Okay, this is my blueprint when my faith gets shaky. All right, things I think about. Ephesians 3.20, it says this, I'll be amplified. Now to him. Who is able? Come on, get, say, say, he's able. He's able. Now unto him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly. More, ah, glory, more than all we dare to ask. Dare, dare, don't be scary now. Dare to ask or think infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, our greatest hopes, our greatest dreams, according, according to the power that worketh in us. Oh God, I believe you. I believe that you're able. I believe that Father God, you can make the blind see, the lame walk. Father God, I thank you. There's nothing too hard for you. Father God, you're a miracle worker. Father God, you speak to barren wombs. Father God, I thank you today that eyes have not seen the glory, all oh, glory of all that you can do. Father God, I thank you today as your words in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither entered the heart of man what God has in store for those who walk uprightly. Believers, you got to hold on to your faith. Praise God. I get so encouraged, so encouraged when I hear members tell me their story. Oh, I get so encouraged. I get so encouraged. I think about Coach and June having twin boys. My God. I think about uh, Patrick and Nicole. My God. <laughs> the faith to hold on. The faith to believe all things are possible. And God will give you examples and have people come in your life to, to, also, to give you some impetus to hold on because you have not received your promise yet. And sometimes when you have not received the promise and you see other people healed and other people restored, your faith can get shaken, you get weak. And then you have to encourage yourself. The Bible says that David encouraged himself. And every now and then you got to encourage yourself and go back in your Rolodex and remember like David says, David said, God was with me the lion. God was with me the bear. God's going to be with me with Goliath. Every now and then you got to go back in your history and see how God had moved before. Ah, oh, he is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And if God did it then, God can do it now. Oh, Father God, I thank you that you're a miracle worker. Lord, I thank you today that there's nothing too hard for you. Genesis 18, 14. As you can see, I'm leaking a little bit, but I'm encouraging myself. Every now and then, you got to encourage yourself through your storm. As the Bible says in Psalms, yea, though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. Ah, oh, the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Pastor, what you doing? I'm encouraging myself. There'll be seasons and times in your life when nobody will encourage you, and you got to encourage yourself. All oh, the words a lamp to my path and a light to my way. The word is my encourager. The Bible says I hold on to God's word, his unchanging hand. God can do it. Genesis 18, 14 says this. Woo, Jesus. Is there anything too hard, too difficult, too wonderful for God? The angel of the Lord told Abraham and Sarah, this time next year you shall have a child. And the Bible says that Sarah laughed and Abraham wondered, how is this possible? This is past my time. But God says with man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So believers, I don't know what promise you're holding on to. But I tell you today, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Oh, hold on to God's unchanging hand. God can do it. Hold on to your faith. Believe that God can do it. For there is nothing too hard for our God. Philippians 4.13 says this. I can do 
all things, <laughs> which he has called me to, oh God, this is the Amplified, I can do all things which he has called me through, through him who strengthens and empowers to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ. <laughs> I'm ready for anything, equal to anything, through him who infuses me I'd, with inner strength and confident peace. Oh God, I thank you. I've been infused. Oh God, I believe you. I believe your word. I'm holding on to your promise. <laughs> Woo, please, Jesus. Genesis 15 and 4 says this. Back into my main text. Then behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this man, Eliza, will not be the heir, but he shall come from your own body, your heir. And the Lord brought Abraham outside his tent at night and said, look now towards the heavens, count the stars. If you're able to count them, then he said to him, so numerous shall be your possessions. Get outside your comfort zone. Get outside your limited thinking. Get outside your rooftop. Our God is saying, I got something bigger than you can see, bigger than your imagination, bigger than your dreams. Get outside of that because what happens oftentimes our thought process is limited to our experience. Our thought process is limited to our background. Our thought process is limited. And God has said, I got to get you outside of your thinking. Uh, because see, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Abraham wasn't promised wealth or fame. He already had it. Instead, God promises descendants like stars in the sky or grains of sand on the seashore. Too numerous to count. To appreciate a vast number of stars, you got to get outside this city, go into the country. And when it gets dark, it's amazing, the stars. He wanted them to look up and try to count it because he wanted them to understand you can't count what I'm trying to give you. <laughs> You can't number what I'm trying to give you. This is so beyond you. See, every now and then, God will give you a vision that will blow your mind. See, if you can feel the vision of God in your life without God, it is too small. Some of you have to double what you're thinking about, triple what you're thinking about, because you need God to get in the midst of what you're doing, because then you got a God vision. Just when Abraham had been despairing over the air, God promised him descendants too numerous to imagine or count. God's blessings are beyond your imagination. <laughs> Verse six. Then Abraham believed. Ooh, I believe. I believe. He says this. And Abraham believed in affirmed trusted in, relied on. Here, let's keep on. Remain steadfast. Oh my God. Oh Jesus. It's hard to remain steadfast when all you get is negative reports. It's hard to stay in faith when it seems like man has no answer. Well, let me help you. <laughs> he doesn't. There are some things that God allows us to go through that are bigger than us. I believe one day that we will have a testimony that can change the world. And this season that God's allowed us to go through is just an incubator for the next level. And we often ask God, why? Why so long? Why do we have to go through this? But I know, as Romans 8, 18 tells us, this is but a momentary light affliction. 
and cannot be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. So I don't know what season you're in right now. Don't know what trial you're going through. Don't know what battle you're facing. But I tell you, I'm in the middle of it with you. <laughs> As Psalm says, yea, though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. So Lord, I trust you in spite of what I see. Lord, I trust you that there's no mountain high enough, no valley low enough that can separate us from the love of you. Lord, I thank you as your word says, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Lord, I trust you. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning time. Lord, I thank you. As your words in James 1, 2, count it all joy. For when we fall in various trials and testings, for the testing of our faith produces patience and let patience have its perfect work that we might be complete and perfect and lacking nothing. Verse six says this, Genesis 15, six. Then Abraham believed in, affirmed in, trusted in, relied on, remained steadfast to the Lord. And he, God, credited it to him as righteousness, doing right in regard to God. Although Abraham had been demonstrating his faith through his actions, it was his belief in the Lord, not his actions, that made him right with God. We too can have a right relationship with God by trusting him. Our outward actions, church attendance, prayer, acts of service will not by themselves make us right with God. It's faith. Ephesians 2 says this, we're saved by grace, not by works. A right relationship is based on faith the heartfelt inner confidence that God is who he says he is and will do what he said he will do. Right actions will follow naturally as a byproduct. As I was preparing this word, I wanted to give you some faith builders. Your faith might be going through a season right now. And I know you're watching me and think, Pastor, you've been crying a lot through this word. I'm in this season. That the, I'm right in the middle of what I'm talking about. And, what I, and, and this is not a church thing. This is a personal thing. Church is well. God is blessing. But the season that God's allowing me and my family to navigate through is trying. But I stand because God has been faithful. He's consistent. I have enough evidence. So I want to give you some supporting scriptures as I close about Abraham. Romans 4, 3 says this, but what does the scripture say? Abraham believed in, trusted, and relied on God, and it was credited to his account as righteousness, right living, right standing with God. So this is good, y'all. Credit is built on belief. Oh, God. Credit is built on belief. So I build my credit with God every time I believe his word on a situation. Oh, this is good. Come on, y'all. I build my credit with God every time I believe his word on my situation and circumstance. So question is, how's your credit with God? Forget about FICO. Forget about Experian. Forget about Equifax. How is your credit with God? Does God trust you? Ah, oh, glory to God. If God told you to give the money, wait, would you do it? If God told you to give your time, would you do it? Do you trust that what God says is true? Woo, and I meant it. Does God trust you with his money? Does God trust you with his talent? Does God trust you with his time? And I mean his, because nothing belongs to us. We're just going through this journey called life. <laughs> We came in naked, we leave in naked. Praise the Lord. Romans 4, 6 is this. And the same way David speaks of the blessing on the one to whom God credits righteousness 
apart from works. So he, again, he separates. There's a difference between faith and works. But see, we want to build our credit with God in reference to believing him. Galatians 3, 6 says this, just as Abraham believed God, it was credited to him as righteousness, as conformity to God's will and purpose. So it is so also with us. Again, credit is built with God by belief, faith. James 2, 23 says this, and the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God and this faith was credited to him by God as righteousness conformed to his will. And he was called a friend of God. Whew. Not too many people are called a friend of God. Now, how do I become a friend of God? I have to trust him. Okay. There's not too many people that I would call in a mess that you would trust to come. Not too many. Ah, I remember, ooh, Jesus, maybe two years ago, uh, a friend of mine now, good friend, he was stuck on the side of the road about an hour and a half away. I didn't know him then, didn't know him. And uh, Pastor Nias called me about 11.45. He said, hey, Jomo, what's up? I said, what's up? I was kind of asleep, but you know, uh, when someone you honor and respect call you, you pick up the phone. I don't have a time for people. Some people I don't have a clock for. Uh, they're that important to me. He talked to me for a second. He said, man, how far are you from this location? He says, I have a friend who's on the turnpike and he's stuck. I'm looking at my clock. I said, Lord Jesus, what you calling me for? <laughs> my flesh, that's my flesh. My flesh said, man. And uh, he says, can you go get him? I said, absolutely. So I got in the car, I drove there and I picked him up. No, I didn't pick him up. Uh, he was waiting for a limo, so I just hung out there with him. And I did not know that his wife had been just diagnosed with cancer. And I sat there and I told him my story of how God allowed me to go through that season. Now, as I think back on how, how God connected all these dots, first off, my relationship with Pastor Nias, he knew that he can call me any hour, any time. And I'm going to move. Then I realized God was trying to see would I still move. See, there's times in your life where when God tells you to do something, you do it fast. And there's times in your life where all of a sudden you get a little, you get some stuff and you forget that God was the one who gave you your stuff. I've realized some people get better broke. Some people get better. <laughs> because all of a sudden you get stuff, you stop giving. But when you have nothing, you gave you, because see, you were trying to get out. So God, first off, God, Pastor Nias figured I would do it. Secondly, I would be tested by God to see what I would do. Then thirdly, I make a trip and I don't pick anybody up. Imagine driving from where we are in the Tampa area to the Florida Turnpike. There's no fast way to get to the Florida Turnpike. Praise the Lord. And get there and you have to talk with a brother for about two or three hours and you don't even give him a ride. So I'm driving back, y'all. I said, Lord, this is a blank trip. What you have me go out and wake up in the middle of the night and go pick somebody in the middle of the road and he didn't come with me. Praise the Lord. And God said, Jomo, I was just trying to see would you go. Would you still move when I tell you to move? I'm thinking to myself, I make a blank trip. But God said, obedience. Would you still go? We don't have too many friends in this world that will sacrifice them late night runs to just step in a gap for you. The Bible says a friend is born for adversity. You don't know who your friend is until you're in the fire. 
until you have to make a move and it's not expected. That's when you realize who your friends are. Whew. So, God considered him a friend because he believed him with no evidence. What is that called? It's called faith. Hebrews 11 1 tells us that now faith is the assurance, the title deed, the confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of the reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced in the physical senses. Oh. I already did Hebrews 11, 6. Hebrews 11, 8 says this, by faith, Abraham, when he was called by God, obeyed by going to a place where he was to receive an inheritance. And he went not knowing where he was going. By faith, he lives as a foreigner in a promised land, as a, in a strange land, living in tents as nomads with Isaac and Jacob, who were his following heirs to the same promise. For he was waiting expectingly, confidently looking forward to the city, which foundations the eternal heavenly city, whose architect and builder is God. Proverbs 3, 5 says this, y'all. Trust in, rely confidently in the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, knowing, acknowledge, and recognize him, he will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. Here it is. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord with reverence, all and obedience. Turn entirely away from evil. It will be health to your body, your marrow, your nose, your nerves, your sinews, your muscles, all your inner parts, and refreshment, physical body and bones. Here it is. Honor the Lord with your wealth and the first fruits of all your crops, your income. Then your bonds will overflow abundantly and be filled and your vats will overflow with new wine. Hebrews 6 and 12 says this. This is where I'm at right now, believers. This, this is where I'm at. Then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. Here it is, y'all. Instead, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and endurance. Why do we got to endure, Lord? You inherit the promises of God through faith and endurance. Right now, my family and I are in a marathon. And I don't know how long this marathon is, but we're just running and believing and trusting. Now, how do I get faith? My last scripture, Romans 10, 17 says this, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, how do I hear what you read and by preaching? Faith comes by hearing. And that's why it's so critical that you hear testimonies because testimonies help build your faith. God is a miracle worker. He is a promise keeper. He is a way maker. So I don't know what petitions you have today. I don't know what faith fight you're in today. But I tell you today, as Galatians chapter six, verse nine says, do not get weary in well-doing. For in due season, you shall reap what you have sown, if you faint not. Second Timothy 4, 7 tells us to fight the good fight, to finish your course, and to keep the faith. I pray you're blessed by this word. If you don't know Jesus, there's no greater time than now to make him your Lord and your Savior. Life is too hard to make it without him. I would have lost my mind. The cup that God has given me to drink, it's a lot. But it's only by faith.
that I can walk through the vicissitudes, trials, and tribulations that God has given me. But I understand the word. I have a call on my life. And the word of God says, to whom much is given, much is required. The anointing is not cheap. And you will have to go through, as John 16, 33 says, in this life you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. For I have already overcome the world. If you don't know Jesus, today is the day that you make him your Lord and Savior. John 14 and 6 says that he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. No one comes to the Father but through the Son. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Some of you here today are in a backsliding condition. You know what to do, but you're not doing what you know. Change begins with you. If you want something different, you got to do something different. Rededicate and recommit your life to Christ today. And some of you are looking for a home church. I am not a perfect man. I'm far from it. I am broken. I'm not a perfect pastor. I'm not a perfect husband or dad. I'm just trying to walk out the path that God's called me to. As Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. But if you want something different, I believe that we can help you on your course. Let us know. LFCC.tv forward slash pray. LFCC.tv forward slash pray. If you need prayer or salvation, let us know. Repeat after me. Father God, I thank you for your son, Jesus, who died for me and rose for me. I thank you. His blood forgives my sins. I confess that I am. I am fallen. I need Jesus in my life. I make you my Lord and my Savior. Holy Spirit, come into my life. Guide me, lead me, fill me. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, I believe you're saved. Let us know, lfcc.tv forward slash pray, and we can tell you the steps and how you can be a part of this life-giving ministry called Love First Christian Center. Right now, I believe God made a deposit it's a great time to sow, and this is good, good, this is good land to give into. If you'd like to give right now, you can go to lfcc.tv forward slash pray. lfcc.tv forward slash pray. If you want to give by text message, whatever amount you choose to give, you can text that amount to 84321. 84321. You'll set up an account, and from there, it will give you the instructions to 84321. Some of you drop it by the church. There's a box in front of the church and some of you give it by mail. Praise God, it's all there on the screen for you. By the way, we do have a cash app and we're gonna get it on the screen. Someone uh, sent me an email about that. Uh, praise God, we do. Uh, it's just love of uh, the number one uh, first church. Basically, that's it. Anyway, we love you. God bless you. My God, this was full. Uh, I didn't expect to have a total blowout, <laughs> but um, it's real, it's raw, it's relevant. And I know that the, God, the word works. So let's pray over the seed. Father God, I bless the seed they sow. Let it come back into their life, press down, shake it together, and run it over. In Jesus' name we pray. First John 4, 4 says this. We are of God, little children, and we have overcome them. For greater is he than us, than he that's in the world. I love you. God bless you. If you have questions, uh, we will be responding to them uh, after. Uh, I don't know how much time we will have, but I will do the best I can in reference to responding to your questions. By the way, we thank you uh, for your gifts. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your words of encouragement. Uh, by the way, my wife and I and family, we are all right. It's just a season we're going through. Amen. And it's been a long season. And every now and then when when I when I I teach, uh, my reality uh, touches me. And that's fine. That's the word. Amen. Uh, we, we're not we're not sanitized. We are organic. <laughs> uh, so I love you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. I know there's somebody out there in your family or friends in your surroundings who need a word. If you could, you can share this word with them. By the way, it's on Facebook. It's on YouTube. It's on Periscope. We love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.
Pastor Jay here. And, and Pastor Charmaine. To God be the glory. We want to celebrate all of our graduates. To God be the glory. Some of them matriculated off through high school, college, masters, or PhDs. We want to say congratulations and thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise God for finishing the work. I know your parents are saying, well done. And some of you are getting off the payroll. To God be the <laughs> glory. Well, we, we, add, we wish you all the success in all your future endeavors. Amen. God bless you and congratulations. Congratulations. For all of the 2020 graduates. God bless you. Pastor God Jay. bless you. Hey family, Pastor Jomo here. As we go through this season, many of you may ask or need prayer. Well, on our website, lfcc.tv, you can click on pray. But if you want a direct link, it's lfcc.tv forward slash pray. P-R-A-Y. As those uh, prayer requests come in, we respond to them at our earliest convenience. I thank you so much. By the way, as you know, every morning, 6.30 a.m., I'm going to be where I'm supposed to be, praying and lifting up God's name to you and also building our faith. I love you. God bless you. Again, if you need any prayer requests, please go to our website, lfcc.tv. Click on pray, or you can go to the direct link, lfcc.tv forward slash pray p-r-a-y i love you god bless you and remember this the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man makes much power available i love you god bless you pastor jomo here